Hemophilia is a um, classified as a bleeding disorder. Um, there are a couple of various uh, versions of it, but the basic versions of hemophilia are uh, you're missing either clotting factor 8 or clotting factor 9 of your blood. My family and I are missing uh, factor 9, specifically. My mother uh, was a woman with hemophilia. Um, my grandfather had had it, and we, you know, it had been in my family and cousins and uncles and whatnot. When I was born, um, there was a lot of precautions involved. I was born um, at our uh, hemophilia treatment center because my mother had the risk, and they weren't quite sure if I was going to be a boy or a girl yet. They were like, "All right, we're going to have this birth here." It turned out to be a boy, and they were like. All right, he has hemophilia. Hemophilia affected my life growing up in that I, I was pretty limited. I couldn't really do sports. I had to stop playing basketball when I was in junior high. Football was never in the question. I had some, some great things happen to me because I didn't do the typical things. You know, I, I got in a marching band in high school and um, went off to college and did that. Hemophilia still affects me um, even to this day. Uh, I had a ankle bleed even about a week ago. Uh, I was walking and my ankle just popped and I could feel it. I could tell automatically that I had to go home and take some clotting factor, which is you know about $6,000 worth of medication that I had to infuse with myself. When I was um, a young child was right when the HIV scare in America was coming out and there were a lot of hemophiliac children who were getting uh, AIDS from their blood product, but for whatever reason, I, I didn't contract it. And my, uh, my mother was on blood product. She did not contract it. In the hemophilia community specifically around um, 1983, that's the first time that the Centers for Disease Control uh, came out and said that what had been known as uh, gay-related immunodeficiency disease was affecting as young as five-year-old and younger uh, boys with hemophilia. Um, so they realized, well, this isn't just an issue in the homosexual community. This is much more widespread. Around 1987, uh, hepatitis C uh, kind of got entered into the blood supply. Pretty much everybody got hepatitis C. About half the pop hemophilia population got HIV, 90% got hepatitis C, and I got it, and my mom got it as well. Um, ultimately, that kind of helped, I fully believe, helped uh, lead to her death. My, uh, my mother had a lot of complications um, medically growing, growing up. She was born in 1949. She was um, diagnosed at that time as one of seven women or girls, you know, with hemophilia. It was incredibly rare for a woman to have hemophilia because of the genetics with the X chromosome. She had a lot of problems when she was a little kid, was involved in a car accident. I want to say she was six, if I remember correctly. Um, and that was the first time they had to deal with major issues with her bleeding. Um, people being like, well, you know, she's a girl. She can't have hemophilia. The absolute worst was when um, she was in her mid-50s and got breast cancer. She was diagnosed in November. She was diagnosed in November right before Thanksgiving of uh, 2004. And she died the day after Christmas. But she had um, had a, a biopsy done and the doctor, despite having her medical records there, refused to believe that she was a woman with hemophilia and didn't give her anything and let, just kind of took the scab off and she bled and she bled and she bled. And it was finally a female oncologist came in and said, you're about to kill this poor woman. Something had happened because she was there. Um, she never left. She just never left the hospital and just got progressively worse and worse. Officially, her death is ruled as a you no know, cause from breast cancer. At her last moments, it was her liver that was causing her the problems. And I have to believe that the hemophilia and the hepatitis C played a major role.
in those pro, you know, in that issue. I almost want to say she knew what was going to happen, knew what was going on because she the entire time was just nervous. She she wanted me to drive and was just kind of talking and kind of just fidgeting and kind of just I think she kind of had a sense of what was about to happen. She died 10 o'clock in the morning on December 26, 2004. I was in her room and she made a sound that I just kind of knew what it meant. I think she forced herself to hold on to, to not die on Christmas Day because she knew kind of how hard that would be. If my mom had had the treatment, available to her that she deserved. I think she would still be alive today. I know that my mom got robbed of years that she didn't have to be. I know that I got robbed of years with my mom. I mean, she never she never got to meet my son. She never got to play with our niece. She didn't get the chance to, to live her life. 